Welcome growers! In this video we will cover Radix plumbing design. Topics include recommended plumbing practices, design considerations, and plumbing system options. Whether starting a small farm or a large commercial operation, this video will help you feel confident in understanding the basic concepts and considerations needed to design your farm. Understanding these options will help you and your contractors build the most cost-effective, labor-efficient, and food-safe farm available to your budget. Now let's take a look at some basic recommended practices for plumbing with the Radix. First, nutrient solution enters the top of each module through a pressurized delivery loop. The entry point depends on the number of layers in operation. For modules with an even number of grow beds, the entry point will be the front right. For an odd number of grow beds, it will be the back left. On the delivery loop, we recommend including a ball valve by each module's inlet. This will allow you to set a precise flow of one gallon per minute to each module. The nutrient solution flows down through each grow bed until it reaches the outlet on the right front leg. This will be the location of the water outlet regardless of how many layers you choose to operate. From here, the water, your nutrient solution, makes its way into some collection plumbing and finally into a reservoir located underneath the module. Sanon Bio makes 50 gallon reservoirs that fit perfectly under one module and can effectively run up to six. Modules can be arranged in single or double rows to fit any layout. We recommend one reservoir per cluster of six modules or a single row of five modules to maintain necessary slope for return plumbing and for appropriate water change out ratios. Water can be cycled back up to the top of the modules or pumped over to a dosing reservoir for automated nutrient management. Pump size and plumbing diameter is determined by module height and length of plumbing runs. We recommend hiring a licensed and bonded plumber for design and installation of projects with 20 or more erratic systems. Once again, here is how water and nutrients flow through a six module cluster plumb to an automated nutrient management system. Fresh water is fed into a large mixing tank where a doser combines nutrients and acids to achieve proper EC and pH balance. Nutrient water is pumped to the cluster via overhead delivery plumbing that distributes to each module by the pressurized delivery loop. Ball valves allow for manual adjustment to achieve the necessary one gallon per minute per module flow rate. Water exits the modules and flows into the under module reservoir through the collection plumbing. A pump located at the under module reservoir sends the nutrient water back to the nutrient mixing tank for EC and pH adjustment. At the end of the growth cycle, the water is either cleaned and returned to the system or disposed of in accordance to local regulations. The major considerations that go into plumbing design focus on cost and operation management. These considerations can be itemized into growing zone separation, contamination protection, cleaning practices, and nutrient management automation. The plumbing system is designed around crop types and zones. We define a zone based on a single nutrient mixing tank and shared plumbing loop. A zone does not have a predetermined number of modules and can be made up of several module clusters. We recommend separate tanks and plumbing lines for each growing zone to promote optimum growth at each plant stage, to facilitate effective cleaning practices, and to reduce risk of contamination. While most leafy greens share similar nutrient needs, each plant stage requires different nutrient levels. At the very least, design should separate propagation from vegetative growth phases. Separating plumbing zones helps control widespread contamination. Contamination includes both human and plant pathogens which can cause major disruption to an operation. A common example is Pythium, a waterborne plant pathogen that can severely stunt plant growth. It's best managed by shutting down a system completely, sanitizing it, and starting up again. So if all the modules in your farm share the same network of plumbing, they all have to be drained and sanitized before proceeding your operation, and this means a loss of time and resources. This is why it's advisable to separate your farm's plumbing into several separate sections we refer to as zones. By creating multiple zones, you can limit how far a pathogen can actually spread within the farm. If contamination is found, you will only need to drain and sanitize the modules connected to that plumbing zone. This can minimize crop loss and the amount of time required to clean and repopulate the modules. A well-designed plumbing system can help decrease human labor by simplifying the water delivery, returns, draining, fresh water top-off, and water treatment. This is especially valuable when it comes to cleaning. A frequent and thorough cleaning routine is your best line of defense against harmful microbes and algae blooms that can adversely affect your water quality. Whenever possible, we suggest implementing a clean-in-place cycle in your cleaning program. A clean-in-place cycle involves the addition of cleansers or sanitizers and allowing them to circulate through the entire zone. This includes the modules, the plumbing, the tanks and reservoirs, and all the otherwise inaccessible parts of your plumbing system. 
The clean in place cycle is also the most labor efficient way to control microbial levels and biofilm accumulation. The final consideration for your plumbing design is automated nutrient management, which is often referred to as automatic dosing or auto dosers. These devices constantly monitor pH and EC of your water and make adjustments according to the parameters that you set. In addition, many of these systems can log data automatically, send alarm notifications, and can also integrate with other environmental controls. Of course, the expense will generally increase with the system's level of sophistication. And the more zones you choose to operate, the more expensive automation will become due to the additional hardware needed to monitor and dose those separate zones. Now that we've taken a look at those design considerations, uh, we have four separate examples that cover different levels of expense, automation, and zone separation. The plumbing elements are color-coded to help demonstrate their function in all the following examples. Our first example is fully independent zones with central control. It offers the highest level of automated nutrient management and contamination protection, but it is the most expensive option. This plumbing style uses an advanced control system, which is capable of controlling multiple growing zones to isolate the modules by cluster, as well as growth stage. We recommend this option whenever possible, as it has the most operational control and the lowest level of risk. Example two is fully independent zones with individual control. This style of plumbing is less expensive than example one and uses individual dosers, which are not connected via a centralized control program. This option maintains operational control, but has fewer technological features. In this style, the germination zone is manually fed, while the two propagation and four vegetative zones are independently controlled. This design has the potential for less overall plumbing as tanks can be located next to the intended zone. The main advantage of style one and two is the ability to run clean in place procedures for each zone without affecting the crop cycle of the other zones. While these operations require more nutrient mixing tanks and support equipment for the autodosers, they make long-term system management easy for operators. Example three is isolation by growth stage with central control. It's similar to style one, but with fewer zones. This design uses a central controller to feed zones separated by crop type and plant stage. It provides separation for different crop needs with a master controller that has the capacity to add new zones if desired. Example number four is simple dosing with individual control. This is perhaps the most basic design possible, consisting of a propagation zone and a vegetative zone. Each of these zones are comprised of multiple module clusters that are controlled by a single auto doser. While this approach is simple and inexpensive, we do not recommend it because it leaves your operation extremely vulnerable to waterborne pathogens. Examples three and four focus on reducing automation costs by using module clusters that share nutrient mixing reservoirs. However, the constant rotation of plants all sharing a single water loop makes it difficult to implement a full cleaning that includes tanks and plumbing. So these styles should be reserved for very small operations or growers just starting out. Plumbing can be one of the more intimidating aspects of designing a farm, but hopefully this video has clarified some of the main things you want to consider as you get started. And as always, never hesitate to contact this non-bio representative for further support. Thanks for watching.